Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. Please make sure you subscribe to the All This Math YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, and share this video, other videos. I want to give a shout out to Cheney University. Shout out to Bridgeway at the Institute for Colored Youth back in 1837 in South Philly. And it was an institution that had their teachers such as the uh, Octavius Cato, who was in the 19th century. Um, a math teacher actually actually an inspiration to me i also teach at cheney university and teach math for the past six years teaching math courses um and also one of the principals of the institute for color youth and fortunes is named at cheney university as fannie jackson coppin fannie jackson coppin the school was coppin state university out in baltimore over on the west is named after her so do your research on cheney university and those two individuals octavius cato fannie jackson coppin and all the other people that taught there graduates, and whatnot. Now, what are we about to get into? We are about to get into some Kwanzaa math. Today is the first day of Kwanzaa, the name is Nguzo Saba, or according to Nguzo Saba, the first day of Kwanzaa is what we know as Umoja. Umoja is the Greek Swahili term for unity, right? It means coming together as one. So what I figured I would do is do a multiplication problem, but do a multiplication problem in four different ways, right? Do the same multiplication problem in four different ways show how we can have what I call operational unity, right? How we can do things in different ways, right? We come from different backgrounds, have some differences of opinion, but still arrive at the same goal, still arrive at the same objective, right? Because our objective is to find the product of 35 and 17, right? 35 is a factor, 17 is a factor, and we want to know what the product is, all right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. The first way we're going to do this, or I'm going to do this, is I'm going to use the, what we call the traditional algorithm, or the common algorithm, or the standard algorithm. You know, it's known by many different names. So that's where we basically just stack the numbers on top of each other vertically, and we multiply each digit by each digit. Let me show you. So let's say we have 35 times 17, right? Like the 35 up here, like the 17 right here. It's like a horizontal line. There's the X. This is what some people would call old math, right? This is how I learned how to multiply when I was in elementary school. So we start with the seven, the number in the furthest, the, the bottom right corner, is the seven. So the seven times five, we get 35. Once you get 35, you put the five here, and then you carry the three to the next column. So then you do seven times three, which is 21, and then you add that three that you carry, which will give you 24. Then you deal with the one. We finished dealing with the seven. Now we deal with the one. Now we multiply one by each of these two digits. So we do one times five, which is five. You always indent one space. The reason that you indent one space, and this is very important. I think everybody should know this in case you don't. The reason you indent one space, and some teachers also tell students to just write a zero right there, is because this is a one, but it really actually is a 10. It represents a 10 because it's in the tens place. So you're really not doing, technically not doing 1 times 5. You're really doing 10 times 5. And we know that 10 times 5 is 50. So 50 would be 5 in the, a 5 in the tens place. Just like this 4 is in the tens place. So the 5 should be in the tens place. That's why some teachers say to just put a 0 here to represent the 50. Right? So in case you was ever wondering why we got to indent, why we always indent. That's why. Right? And it's important to know why you do that. Right? A lot of times when we learn math, we just get so caught up in learning the algebra. Learning the steps. I'm just trying to get to the answer. I don't care about why it works. I'm here to tell you, you should care about why it works. It matters. The, re the reason that it works matters because that's going to help you when you get to higher level math. All right, so now we did 1 times 5. We got 5 indented. Then we're going to do 1 times 3. We get 3. Now, this 3 we already used, so I really could cross that out. And we're going to put the 3 in the hundreds place. All right? Then we draw another horizontal line because I'm finished with the 1. I multiply 1 by everything. Then I put a plus on, and then I'm adding these two numbers together. So 5 plus nothing is just 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. 2 plus 3 is just 5. That's the final answer, 595. That's the standard algorithm. So that's method number one. All right? Now I want to do another method called partial products. All right? Let me switch the color up. <clears throat> the partial products, is sim it's a similar setup to this, but we actually, we don't carry numbers. We don't carry numbers. So let's say we do 35 times 17, and I'm multiplying, so then we're going to start with the 7, just like we did in this method, 7 times 5 is 35, 
So I'm not going to carry the three. I'm just going to write 35. I write the full product, 35. Then I'm going to do 7 times 30. Why am I doing 7 times 30? Because this 3 represents a 30, because the 3 is in the tens place. So the 3 tells us how many tens I have, like three $10 bills. 3 is in the tens place, so that's really a 30. This is 35, meaning 30 plus 5, 30 plus 5. So 7 times 30 is 210, because 7 times 3 is 21. It's 210 because we just attach a 0 to the 21. So that's going to be 210. Boom, 210. Make sure you line everything up according to place value. 0 under 5, 1 under the 3, 2 under the blank space. All right? Now I'm finished with the 7. Then I go to the 1. This 1 is really a 10, though, because the 1 is in the 10th place. Don't forget that. So it's 10 times 5, which is 50. So you put the 50 down here. All right? Remember, we're not, when we use partial products method, we don't carry nothing. We don't carry nothing. Now we're doing 10 times 30, because that's, again, that 3 was a 30, just like it was when we did 7 times 30. It's still a 30. So 10 times 30 is 300. So I'm going to put 300 right here. And now I've multiplied everything. Now this is called the partial products method. Just like everything in math has a name for a reason, because each of these numbers are a partial product, a partial product, each of these four numbers. You're going to add them up to get the final product. All right? So I could do 5 plus a bunch of zeros is just 5. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 plus 0 is 9. 2 plus 3 is 5. And look what happened. I got 595 doing it the first way. I got 595 doing it the partial products way. So again, unity. Unity. Emoja. Emoja. Okay? Unity. And then Google Salva. Right? We can do things in different ways and still be unified in what our answer. We're trying to get to a certain goal. We have unity of thought, unity of action. All right, well, not necessarily unity of action, but we're doing things in different ways, but we have a final, we have a unity in terms of our goal and our objective, right? We're trying to get to the same place. Let's do it another way. What if I, um, what if I was doing mental math? If I was doing this using mental math, there's a few ways I could do it, but I would probably do it like this, right? 35 times 17, I might flip it like this. I might change the 17 into... 20 minus 3. 20 minus 3. Now, why would I do that? I would do that because 20 minus 3 is 17. But why would I do it like that? Why not do 10 plus 7? Why not do 16 plus 1? Because I want to use a number that ends in 0 because numbers that end in 0 are easier to work with. I call them happy numbers. Not H-A-P-P-Y, though. I call them H-A-P-I happy. Like happy like what we used to call the Nile River back in the day. What our ancestors used to call the Nile River back in ancient Kemet modern day Egypt, right? The happy river is the Nile River, right? And it's happy because it makes the math easier. When you multiply by numbers that end to zero, the math is easier. Because I can actually pretend like that zero not even there. And I could just do 35 times 2. 35 times 2 is 70. How do I know that? Because if I break the 35 into two parts, 30 and 5, 30 and 5, 30 and 5, 30 times 2 is 60. 5 times 2 is 10. What's 60 plus 10? 70. So 35 times 2 is 70. Then I just attach that zero, and I get 700. So I got 700. Put my minus sign, because look, distributed property. Boom, 35 times 20. Don't forget to multiply by the other number inside the parentheses, though. What's 35 times 3? 35 times 3 is, again, what I would do, if I'm doing this mentally, I'm breaking that 35 down into two parts, 30 and 5, 30 and 5. 30 times 3 is 90. 5 times 3 is 15. Then I do 90 plus 15. 90 plus 15 is 105. Right? So that's minus 105. So that's 700 minus 105. So I'm doing 700 minus 100, which is 600. Then I'm doing 600 minus 5, which is 595. Again, look what I'm doing. I used the traditional algorithm, and I got 595 for my product. I used partial products. I got 595 for my product. I use a mental math method using distributive property, and I got 595 for my product. I'm getting 595 regardless. Right? Now let's do this one more way. Right? Because I don't want this video to get too long or too crazy. Right? But we're going to use comedic multiplication. I'm taking it back to ancient Kemet again. I mentioned happy numbers, Nile River, ancient Kemet. Now I'm going to use comedic multiplication. This is something our ancestors left to us. All right? So what you do with comedic multiplication, you take the two factors, you write them like this, 35 and 17, and you set up like what's, what looks like a T-chart, right? Boom, two columns, one column under the first factor, one column under the second factor, 35, 17, 35, 17. Now, what you do,
do is under the first factor right here, you write a one. Under the other factor, you just repeat that number. So I'm gonna write a 17. One and 17 line up with each other. Comedic multiplication uses doubling. Doubling. You just keep doubling numbers, right? It's up to a certain point, but you double, right? Let me show you. So I'm gonna double one, meaning I'm gonna do one times two, which is two. Then I'm gonna double two, which is two times two, which is four. Then I'm gonna double the four, which is four times two, which is eight. Then I'm gonna do eight times two, which is 16. Then I'm gonna do 16 times two, which is 32. Now, I'm gonna stop right there with the doubling. Why do I do that? Because the rule is, pay attention to this. You don't double or you stop doubling when you get to a number that is less than, as close to, well, let me say it like this. You don't wanna double and go past the original factor in that column. Again, you don't wanna double and go past the original factor in that column. So if I double 32, I'm gonna get 64. 64 is bigger than or past 35. We don't wanna do that. So that's why we stop at 32. We don't stop at 16, because we still could double again and get to a number that's closer to 35. We don't stop at eight, because we could double it and get 16 and then get 32 and get to a number that's closer to 35. But you never wanna go past this number, all right? Now we're gonna double this, do, do the same thing in this column. Start with 17. Now this is a good way to practice uh, multiplication Multiplication fluency, multiplying by two. It's just a good skill to have, right? So I'm going to do 17 times two, which is 34. Because two, because 10 times two is 20, seven times two is 14. 20 and 14 is 34. Then I'm going to do, I'm going to double 34. I'm going to get 68. So 30 times two is 60, four times two is eight. That's 68. Then I'm going to do 68 times two. 60 times two is 120. Eight times two is 16. 120 plus 16 is 136. So I line that 136 up with the 8. Then I'm going to double 136. And again, you see what we're doing? We keep, we're just doubling numbers, doubling numbers, doubling numbers. 136 times 2 is 200 plus 60 plus 12. 200 plus 60 plus 12. Double each of the digits. 200 plus 60 plus 12 is 272. So the 16 matches up with 272. Then I'm going to double 272. Double 272, double 200, you get 400. Double 70, you get 140. Because 7 times 2 is 14. So 70 times 2 is 140. Right? See how that works? So 400, 140 is 540, and 4. So that's 544. So the 32 matches up with 544. Now, just a couple more steps. The next step is we go back to this first column. And we pick a combination of these numbers that add up to exactly 35. Whatever the number is up here, whatever the factor was up here you started with. So we always start with the biggest number. So I'm going to start with 32. And I'm going to say 32 plus what will give me 35 from this column? 32 plus 16 won't work. So actually, I could draw a line through 16. No, 16 won't work. And the number that it's accompanied by over there. 32 plus 8 won't work because that's going to give me 40. Draw a line through that. 32 plus 4 won't work because that's 36. That's too much. So what am I left with? 32 plus 2 is 34. 34 plus 1 is 35. So these are the three numbers that's going to work. The 32, the 2, and the 1. They add up to 35. These three add up to 35. These three add up to 35. Now, how do I get my actual product, though? Look on the other side of this vertical line, the other column. What are the three numbers? 544, 34, 17. 544, 34, and 17. We're going to add them up. These, it's like partial products. You see how these, these methods are also very interconnected. So 500, 40 and 30 and 10. 40 and 30 and 10. 40 and 30 is 70. 70 and 10 is 80. Right? 500 plus 80 is 580. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. 580 plus 15 is 595. I love it when the plan comes together. So look what happens. So again, Kwanzaa math, first day of Kwanzaa, Umoja, unity, right? We do things in different ways, but we have unity because we arrive at the same result. We got 595, 595, 595, 595 again. We keep getting 595, right? And there are other methods of multiplication that we can use. We're still going to get 595. As long as you're multiplying 35 times 17, or if you flip it, Using a commutative property and do 17 times 35, you still gonna hit 595. All right. So these are the
these are just some methods of multiplication I wanted to introduce introduce to you, and I also wanted to show how they represent and how they illustrate one of the principles of the Azuzo Saba from the first day of Quran. All right, so stay tuned for some videos based on the other days of Kwanzaa, the other days from the Azuzo Saba. Peace. See you on the next video.